I'm Dr. Craig Baker. I'm an associate professor of surgery at the Keck School of Medicine. Um, I'm a cardiac surgeon by training, and I've been involved in the training of our residents for a lot of years now. Um, one of the things that we found over the last 10 to 15 years is that we're training a different type of, or a different generation of student. And the newer generation of students don't spend as long in the hospital. There's duty hour restrictions. And really the overall nature of their surgical training has changed quite a bit. Um, we realized years and years ago that we needed to find a way to cater to the learning needs of this new millennial generation and adopt our traditional platforms of learning from textbook models to electronic based learning models or e-learning. We needed a resource that would be able to be always available, um, that our residents could access, our learners could access at any time of any day, no matter where they were, and we needed it to be able to handle all the various learning formats. You can imagine in surgery, for example, it may be very important to watch a surgical video or see an anatomy atlas um, or watch a live demonstration. And those are things that just weren't being able to be handled by our current textbook models. Um, early on in the process, I did some research. I went to the Brain website. Um, the reviews were outstanding. Um, I, at that time, was pretty naive to what mind mapping was, what even e-learning or content management or information management systems did. But as I did more and more learning about the brain, um, I quickly understood that this mind mapping idea where you have a software capable of making content available in a manner similar to the way we think as physicians and we organize our thoughts about medicine became very attractive. I think one of the things that really makes the brain unique is, you know, when we think about diseases, we think in kind of chunk terms. We think about, okay, you have an overall disease, there's a pathophysiology of the disease, there's a way to diagnose and assess the disease, there's treatment options, there's surgical planning, and you know that's how we think, that's how we educate our residents early on is tell me about the disease process. You know, how does the disease present? What tests would you order? What treatment would you offer? And the brain actually allows you to organize your thoughts exactly like that. You can have your brain set up to mimic exactly how you would want to teach or categorize any given disease process. I think what really separates the brain from a conventional mind map is most mind maps are very linear. You can track information, but the information is not associative. What the brain does is create an incredibly dynamic interface where all the various elements of context are not only displayed near each other, they can link to various other aspects of the brain. So for example, if you have a surgical procedure that may be associated with two different diseases, you can link it in a very dynamic way and realize that when you look at that specific part of the brain, you can see that it would have shown up in another content area. And that dynamic representation of content I think is incredibly different and really separates the brain from other mind mapping technologies. The issue with developing a core curriculum project is covering all these subjects that cardiac surgeons need to know so that they can operate on patients safely was how do you organize it in a way that people can access and, um, and will be intuitive to accessing. And so to organize this project, we use the brain. And the brain is a way that people can access the core information in a uh, rapid fashion. The organization of the brain is so intuitive and so um, easy to manage that it, it really takes away all those areas where um, people would say, hey, I couldn't find a textbook or I couldn't find this, I couldn't find that. It, it's so intuitive that there's no excuse. And once you take away the excuse from an early learner or even a late learner, um, the onus goes to them. And so it, it, it makes teaching easier, it makes um, learning easier, and it makes it very easy for the educator to evaluate the progress of their students. You have multiple textbooks, multiple resources, multiple articles, multiple journals, and we don't really know where to go, how to find the information for what we want to find, even on a set day. Now with the brain, what's happened for us is every information has been pulled into one resource center. It's like the go-to for us and you can, the information is so well organized and it's so easily accessible. It's actually linked really well as well, in my opinion, that it's very easy for us to access the information. So now if I want to read on a topic, I have one place to go to set topics in that, the, in that information that I want to get and 
that's what makes it much easier for me. So if, for example, you want to study or learn what's available in cardiovascular surgery, you can simply click on cardiovascular surgery and you'll see the 10 various content areas associated with cardiovascular surgery. Could be cardiac conduction system disorders, could be cardiothoracic trauma, or something like general management of a patient undergoing cardiovascular surgery. As you scroll down further, you can see there's different type of resources. So this is a audiovisual lecture put on by the Thoracic Surgery Directors Association. This is a TSRA review book of cardiothoracic surgery. And we've impl implemented YouTube videos that are easily accessible. So you can really see the power of this technology. If, for example, I want to review this chapter, I can click on Surgical Anatomy of the Heart, click on the icon here, and literally in real time comes up the textbook chapter that I would want my residents to learn. So as I scroll down through the PDF file, they'll see the anatomy of the heart, they'll see all the, audio, the visual representations of the heart. For the same token, I can go back, and if I wanted them to study, um, or I thought this video was particularly useful, they click on this link, and immediately they'll be taken to a website where they can immediately watch the video. I think one of the other unbelievable things about the brain is its ability to link related topics. For example, I got to cardiac anatomy by going through cardiovascular surgery. Well, cardiac anatomy is also an important part of thoracic core anatomy, which is part of our core surgical foundation knowledge set. So this immediately shows me that cardiac anatomy could have been um, entered by going through any of these data points. So it really is an efficient way to organize the content. We, we wanted to have a place that residents could access our content and the, and the material that we would want them to master. And we want that to be accessible in a very timely fashion where they could sit down, decide they want to study or learn about a specific surgery, a specific disease process, and have that content available within a couple minutes so they could pull up whatever media source they wanted to learn from and do that. And we found that with the brain.